What is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? It has been some time since Evo occurred, and I am finally able to sit down and talk about it. God damn, life has kept me busy for some time, both for good and ill, but we are here, and we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Evo. So number one, I mean, obviously, the elephant in the room, Mandalay Bay Event Center, the fucking fighting game tournament of the year, sold out an arena. An arena. It wasn't a hotel ballroom. It wasn't an event room at a college. It wasn't some little dingy garage on the west side of Sacramento or nothing like that. It was fucking Mandalay Bay Event Center. Holy shit. How cool is that? How must it have felt to be L.I. Joe? In the middle of that shit, that entire arena chanting your name. God damn, that must have felt good. But, you know, the FGC, it's moving on up. Uh, one thing, so Cross Counter TV released an interview with Long Island Joe, and he mentioned, like, the success of Street Fighter is going to bleed outward. And it's going to result in people, you know, paying attention to Street Fighter. And then because there are other fighting games at all of the events that Street Fighter is at, other people are now going to start paying attention to these other games. Like, oh, wow, yeah, I mean, Street Fighter's getting all the attention, but I like the look of that game. And I really hope that is what happens, but when you actually look at it, I looked at the numbers uh, between 2015 and 2016, the registration numbers. Let me pop them up again really quick. I remember the, I somewhat remember them off the top of my head, but I would prefer to not just remember them. Uh like decently and would actually like to have the numbers in front of me so 2015 ultra street fighter 4 had 2227 entrants 2016 street fighter 5 had 5065 that was the big story people were losing their shit when it eclipsed 4000 registrants and then it hit over 5000 only it got 5065 it barely got there but it got there now could you imagine if if the uh tournament actually maintained that level of growth year by year like there's no way in hell that's almost a 250 percent growth rate there's no way that like 10 thousand or actually it would have to be about twelve thousand people registered next year and then like twenty five thousand the next year then seventy thousand you know like you just keep growing exponentially that's not how growth works ever it would be amazing if it did, but, uh, I mean, obviously Street Fighter uh, moved up in a big way. Smash also moved up by quite a lot. Neither one of them got uh, 2,000 entrants. Smash for Wii U almost did it last year. They had 1,926. 1,926 entrants. Melee had 1,869. In 2016, Smash for Wii U got 2,637. Melee got 2,350. They put in work, boys. Anybody that's ever questioned why there are two Smash games at EVO, that right there is your answer. They almost got a thousand new entrants for Smash for Wii U and 500 more for Melee. For Melee! Let me look up. How old is Melee exactly? That has to be like 12, 13 years old, right? Smash Melee release date. I don't give a shit about a tier list. Get your shit out of here. We all know Fox runs that game. <laughs> Uh, 2001. That is a 15-year-old game, folks. A 15-year-old game is the third most popular game at EVO. 15 years old? That motherfucker's getting its way through high school right now. That's impressive. That's incredibly impressive. And so, like I said, anybody... If you have ever questioned, because I see it a lot, why are two Smash games at EVO? How is that fair? That should have gone to another game. Hell no, it should not have. No. I am not even that big of a fan of Smash. And I'm going to get into that in a little while when I actually talk about Smash. The story of Melee this year? Fucking fantastic. Hungry Box? You see how happy that man was? Holy shit, that's a good story. But I don't really care about the game all that much. It's just never been my jam. I've never 
particularly gotten into it. I don't now granted part of that is whether or not you understand it and I'm going to get into that in a bit as well. Um but it's just nobody can deny based on the numbers alone. You don't have to get into the hype, you don't have to get into the number of people watching which on Twitch TV, not including ESPN or anywhere else on Twitch TV, the highest number of watchers was for Melee. They got the most viewers. Out of any other game at EVO, Melee got the most. So, anybody that has ever criticized there being two Smash games right there, 2,600 entrants for Wii U, 2,300, actually almost 2,400 for Melee, almost 2,700 for Wii U, back down. They have Those communities have proven you wrong. And you know what else proved people wrong? Pokin. That was another game that was in the same vein as Street Fighter Cross Tekken. It wasn't even out yet when it was announced as a main stage Evo game, and people lost their shit. They have two Smash games, and now they have Pokin too. Guess what was the fourth most popular game in terms of its entrance? Pokin. Marvel didn't get over a thousand entrants. Guilty Gear didn't get over a thousand entrants. Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, Tekken, none of those got over one thousand entrants to Evo. You know what did? fucking poking did so again sit your ass the fuck down because pure and simple evo is a business and that is one thing that i think people really need to get through their minds it's not personal when your favorite game is not declared a main stage evo game it is not mr wizard coming out and saying your game sucks and it doesn't deserve to be here it's mr wizard coming out and saying we have limited time we can only afford to showcase this, um, these amount of games in this time slot. If we had an entire month to run EVO, we could do everything on the main stage, but we don't. We have three days, so we gotta focus on certain things, and the, fo the thing that is gonna get that focus are games that have proven communities and proven popularity. And if your game doesn't have that, it sucks. It could be the best game in the world. I'm not going to criticize anybody else's game. I would love to see a game like O'Neill at uh, Under Night and Birth, in case you don't know what that stands for, which it just occurred to me. The acronym for that is O'Neill, but the game is literally called Under Night and Birth, where the B, uh, the B is silent. Let's just go with that. The B is silent. Language is weird. We move forward. Um, but yeah, it's, I would love to see that game there. That's my favorite fighting game right now, pure and simple. And... But the tournament, there's not enough of a tournament community. That game would have gotten like 300, 400 entrants if it was at Evo. And I think the lowest game, I think Tekken 7 was the one that got the lowest. No, Killer Instinct, 540, and Tekken 7 got 543. But I don't think O'Neill as a game has the tournament community to support even that much. And even then, you're looking at 540 people. Even I don't think that's much. I think that any future games going in need to be hitting or trying to hit the 1,000 number. Now, whether or not they're going to be able to do that, King of Fighters 14, tournament community, where are you going to be? Are you going to support the game? Are you going to get it into EVO? Or are you going to keep it going? Or is it just going to wash away, despite the fact, you know, King of Fighters 13 had one of the, some of the hypest tournaments at EVO, period. Not even just EVO that year. EVO, period. King of Fighters 13 had some of the hypest moments throughout. But the simple fact of the matter is, is thanks to SNK designing a very subpar netcode and not really supporting the game at all, it just dwindled away. It didn't get a new community. Nobody new came in. And so the community just kind of dwindled away one by one, and eventually it got too small to continue supporting its status as a main stage Evo game. And it's the same thing that happens with anime games. Everybody moves on to whatever is the newest one released, and the last one is left as a ghost town until a newer version of that one comes back and everybody cycles back around into it. And so, as wonderful as it would be to see an Evo that features Persona 4 Arena, Blaze Blue, O'Neill, uh, Guilty Gear, fucking whatever other games are out there, Dengeki, Nitro Plus, like, they don't have the tournament communities to support them. Not enough people get into them and play them in tournaments to be noticed and have somebody like Mr. Wizard look up and be like, oh shit, this might actually get some attention. Maybe I should pay attention to that. So that long-winded bit uh, basically culminates in me saying, if you are upset about a specific game not being main stage Evo, 
there's there's just some work that needs to be done. You can rouse all the rabble you would like, rah rah on the internet, talk shit on message boards as much as you like, and it means nothing. You need to show. You need to po- be able to point to multiple tournaments in a row that had huge showings that show that that game deserves attention and is popular and will show up and make it worthwhile for that game to be a main stage game at Evo. And a lot of communities just aren't willing to do that. Too many people are just willing to sit back, sit at home, and just be like, well, why isn't that game featured? It's because you're not going to tournaments. Pure and simple. We move past that. We're not here to discuss this kind of stuff, even though I just discussed it for like 10 goddamn minutes. Evo itself, Saturday, did not watch anything. So unfortunately, I do not have... I only watched a a bit of Guilty Gear on Friday. I think I got to watch like maybe top 64 dwindle down to top 8. I'm not exactly sure where I started. I should have written it down. This is a, a lesson learned that will be completely forgotten by next year's Evo when I take notes again. But like for instance, one of my notes on for Friday Guilty Gear was, Wake up super boys, it's not scrubby if it works. I don't know what match that was in reference to. I don't know who was playing, whose Wake Up Super was used. I just know that I wrote that down. That means somebody at some point did a Wake Up Super and probably won a round off of it. And like, good note taking, dude. That's that's my that's my school experience at work right there. I am a terrible note taker. I'm not good at it. I basically just rely entirely upon my memory for good or ill. And at this point, it's failing me. Uh. But yeah, Saturday was just a remarkably busy day for me. I basically worked in the... Like, I was not home at all for Saturday from, like, 2 in the morning until around 11 p.m. at night. I was gone. That was my Saturday. (laughs) So I didn't get to watch Evo, but I did get to see a little bit on Friday, and I did my best to watch everything on Sunday, and we'll get into that when I actually make it to Sunday. But first, let's talk about Guilty Gear on Friday. First match I tune into, Sumido. If you do not know who Sumido is, he is the chip god. He has been playing chip since early versions of Guilty Gear. Not just XR, but Accent Core. I don't know if he's played chip. I don't know how long he's played chip for and if he's just been that a main of that character the entire time Guilty Gear has been in existence. But I remember the very first time I was like, I'm going to learn chip. Somebody show me chip. I found Sumido. And he has been the best representative of that character throughout Guilty Gear's lifespan, basically. And so to see him show up at EVO and be the first match that I see, at first, phenomenal, exciting, amazing. I could not be happier that this is the first match that I get to watch. Who's his opponent, you may ask? It was Nakamura. A Milia main, a godlike Milia main, one of the best Milias, period. So you have one of the best chips against one of the best Milias. Bullshit offense against bullshit offense. Which one is gonna win? Nakamura did. Blew him the fuck up. I think there were actually multiple perfects throughout the set, but Nakamura had a very clear edge and really showed off the strength of Milia. And it really sucked that the very first match I see features. If I have to point towards two favorite players, FAB and Sumida. Easy. I don't even have to think about that. If I had to pick one of them as my favorite, that would be a bit more difficult. But top two? Easy. Unquestionable. Uh, and so to see Sumido just lose immediately the moment I tune into the stream, a little bit of a downer from the start. But we move forward. Uh, Nakamura, and then I, I don't know if there were any matches in between. But the one I remember after that was, again, Nakamura facing off against a Johnny player called Omito, who I had not heard of before this tournament, but he was incredibly good. I think I mentioned before in a previous Guilty Gear video that, like, the only notable Johnny I knew from Japan was Karinchu. Omito is a very notable and good Johnny. Obviously, he got second place at EVO. Of course, he's notable and good. But I don't know if I've ever heard that name before. So I don't know if he's just... He doesn't go to like tournaments that get streamed or anything like that but he was an amazing player but I noted that match specifically namely because not of a moment that happened on screen during the match but a moment that happened after a round 
Nakamura had this massive smile on his face after Omido got him with something. Again, my note-taking skills, I should have written this down so I could point toward exactly what happened. But I remember exactly what happened afterward. The camera switches to the player cam, shows Nakamura with a big-ass smile on his face, and he just turns to Omito, pats him on the shoulder. And I don't know, he said something, but obviously I don't know what he said. Uh, and that's the kind of thing, just seeing that, seeing that level of i mean respect enjoyment of what's occurring right now like yes it's huge serious times we're at evo we're trying to get first place we want to win but you know what i'm enjoying every goddamn second of it that's what i saw from nakamura and i feel like that is the kind of thing that's really going to push the fgc forward as we move on because there's a lot of there are a lot of personalities in the FG. I mean, there's a lot of personalities in anything that gets any sort of public attention. But I feel like, in general, just the the ability to combine pure and utter friendship with the salt and the hatred and the competitiveness. There's just there's this perfect mixture of that there within the FGC that I think doesn't exist in anything else that I've ever watched. Uh, I haven't watched a lot of other esports like. You know, Counter Strike Go is global offense. I think that's what it stands for. One of the biggest games, period, in terms of esports. Uh, you have Dota, League of Legends, StarCraft. I mean, you have all these things that have that very much eclipse the FGC in terms of where they're at right now as a community and as a game, and in terms of you know like prize pools and stuff like that. But from what I've seen from them, there's nothing that even moderately compares to what the community is for fighting games. And that perfectly showcased it. And I feel like that's the kind of stuff that needs to be paid attention to. That's the kind of stuff that deserves to be shown off to places like ESPN or anybody else interested in getting involved as you show off this incredibly high level competition combined with just the joy of it. And that was really good to see. That was really fun uh, to watch, to see that moment and to see it kind of continue onward. And again, just everybody's being so happy about it. It was really cool to see. So I just wanted to mention that for a bit. Uh, my next note is why FAB sad face. Obviously he lost because he didn't make top eight. But I, I don't know who he lost to. <laughs> I didn't write it down because I'm a dumbass. Uh, but my next one, I do know what happened here. Kazunoko Raven against Nage Faust. Kazunoko beat him. I don't know what people's overall opinions are on Raven. I haven't really, like I haven't been I don't I can't even remember the last time I went to Dust Loop and that's obviously the place you want to go if you want serious discussion revolving around Guilty Gear Blaze Blue. Well, probably definitely those two games, maybe Persona 4 Arena. I mean, definitely Arc System works in general. That's your main location for information and discussion around those games. I have not been to I have not been to Dust Loop in ages. I can't remember uh, the last time I went there. So I don't know what people's overall thoughts are of Raven, but from what little I did see, a lot of people seemed down on him, seemed to think he wasn't very good, which I didn't really understand. You know, like I'm not gonna jump in on the conversation myself, because obviously I'm not that good at Guilty Gear to begin with, and I'm certainly have not learned the character, the intricacies behind it, the way his mechanics work. So I didn't I was not armed with enough knowledge to be able to hop in there and be like, yo, guys, I think you're wrong. I can say that. I can just be like, hey, I think you're wrong. Why? Eh. <laughs> that's not very good. That's not a very good argument. I'm not going to uh, make anybody change their minds with that. And so I was like, well, fuck it, whatever. Let's just, that's what people think. That's what people think. We move forward. Uh, and then Kazunoko beat Nage. Nage is a Faust god, one of the best Guilty Gear players, period. And Kazunoko beat him with Raven and looked incredibly strong while doing it. And so I just wrote down Raven confirmed S tier because only S tier can beat Nage. And then I, I think it was Ogawa. I don't know. There were three Zato players in top eight. And one of those Zato players uh, beat Nage. So it was either that top grand guy from Korea, Marlon Pie, which I don't think it was, or Ogawa. No, because Top Garan start he started in winners, right? And that match would have had to be in losers because Kazunoko knocked him into losers. So it would have had to either be or did Top Garan start in winners? Shit. 
<laughs> I can't. I feel like I remember one of the Zatos being in the winner's bracket, and then the other one, like, didn't Marlon Pai and Ogawa fight first, the first round of losers top eight? And then if the other Zato wasn't winners, obviously there's only one Zato left. It would have had to be Top Garan. Fuck it, I don't know. But, uh, anyway, so I just put down C, Zato beats Nage, 3 in top 8, S tier. Undeniable logic, Raven is S tier. There's, there's, there's a properly formed argument for you. Take note if you're in an argumentative class. And never, never do that. Your teacher will fail you immediately. But it's okay. I am not a teacher, nor am I trying to be graded for this. So I can do whatever the fuck I want. Hey, yo. Moving on. So, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. This must have been a match with Omido. Because uh, I wrote down, Johnny is such a dominant character when he gets a touch. It's not even like Milio, where you just get knocked down and think, Man, have fun guessing. It's just oppressive. Like, you don't even, you don't get to guess, you don't have to guess, you just gotta hold this offense for a while until he's finally a little bit off of you. Like, you gotta guess and hope you can get an alpha counter or you can just jump an air dash away. Like, that character, his offense is just so scary. And it's the same thing with Taukaka, too. Like, neither one of them have these, like, dominant mix-ups that are gonna keep you guessing and just make you feel helpless like you're just getting red left and right. It's just the offense is so good that there's no real holes in it. And that's what makes it so scary. Ken in Persona 4 Arena is another character along that same vein. And so just watching Johnny get played at the level people were playing him at that tournament. God, that character is scary. <laughs> I don't know how the recent patch uh, handled him at all. I don't really know. Again, it's the same thing with Raven. I don't know the game well enough to really understand the implications behind his nerfs. I don't understand the character himself enough to understand the implications behind his nerfs. And thus, I don't know, you know, like, if it, he's still quite as dominant as he was, or if he's just, you know, well, now he's really good. He has a... The tools that he has at his disposal keep him being amazing, no matter what. Like, they can nerf him into the ground, and he'll still have really good tools. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as Valkenheim. Like, what they did to him in... Um, was it Extend? I think Extend. They kind of neutered him a little bit. But he's still a scary as shit character that you can't block for the life of you. <laughs> it's just he does no damage now. Uh, but anyway, let's move on past that. So, that's the only thing I saw on Friday. Obviously, I mentioned Saturday was a, was a no for me. I didn't watch anything. So, Sunday. I get home right when Mortal Kombat 10's uh, X, I'm sorry, right when Mortal Kombat X's finals are ending, and it's, of course, Sonic Fox against somebody else who was using Kotokan, Sun God Kotokan, did not see that coming, um, but it was just kind of funny, because that's another game that I just, I haven't paid any attention to it since I stopped playing it, I haven't really been that interested, but I do know that every single time a new character dropped, I heard complaints about their effectiveness, how good they are, how they're ruining the meta, etc., etc., uh, basically immediately. And so it was just kind of funny to see Sonic Fox switch off of Aaron Black to Alien to take the tournament and just be like, hey, here's my, here's my DLC character, hold that, bitch. Prove all the arguments correct. Alien looked like a scary character, but again, you know, we're going back to the same thing. I don't know. I do know the game decently well enough, but I definitely don't know the character. I don't know anything about it. I haven't, I departed that game long before that DLC character came out. But yeah, that's, uh, it's just kind of amused me to see a DLC character win it after all of the DLC shenanigans behind it. Who actually won? Is there, is there a listing here? that shows uh nope that's just comments i was hoping i might be able to just look at let me let me go to google real quick and just google who won uh smash 4 evo because saturday uh there were only four finals that took place on um on sunday and so re the rest of the games tekken 7 killer instinct smash 4 all had to take uh place before that and so i wanted to see does it... Oh, hopefully this listing actually tells me who the hell won. Come on. Switching the cloud and winners. Oh, wait, no. Off the Canadian star. That's the, that's the person that lost. Tell me who they used. I, 
I don't... They, this is a terrible... Like, tell me who they used. What the fuck? Red Bull, you're a terrible sponsor! Unless you're looking to sponsor me, in which case you're awesome, and I'll drink your terrible drinks that taste awful. <laughs> oh, boy. Hope they never see this. Yo, seriously, like, what even is all this sh Show me... There we go. God damn, I just have to scroll down to the bottom of the fucking page. People gotta learn proper web design. Proper organizational tactics. He went with Mario? What the fuck? Well, Mario's definitely not a DLC character. But I heard... You know, I've heard numerous times. Oh, Cloud's broken. Bayonetta's broken. But Mario won, and I've never heard a goddamn person in the world say Mario's broken, so... I guess we can avoid that for Smash 4. But anyway... Uh, so we move forward, and I just wrote this down. In intermission, I had to go to a symphony orchestra last night, which I highly advise anybody do if you have one around you. Really nice experience. Also, there are some attractive people that go there. Not just attractive women. Attractive dudes, too. So whichever one you're interested in, holler. It's a good time. That wasn't my main motivation for going, but let me tell you, it was a good reason for staying. Especially when a wonderfully beautiful redhead sits right next to you. Then unfortunately had a ring, and that was that was a sad that was sad times to notice because we were actually getting along quite well and having a nice conversation about what was occurring. God damn she was beautiful. Seriously, what the fuck? Lucky ass dude that put that ring on her. Wasn't even willing to go to a symphony orchestra with her. Some bullshit, man. I'm gonna should have stolen that girl right off from under him. You fucking kidding me? God damn. Moving forward! So because I went there, and so because of that, like I said, I was out of the house from 2 a.m. until 11 p.m. I had to be out of the house again at 3 a.m. the following day. Obviously, that means I did not get much sleep. So I wrote down here, guaranteed, I'm going to pass out at some point in time during this. So I'm going to bet on which game it will happen during. I am going to say Marvel. But it might happen during Melee, because I think I'll be too into Revelator to pass out during. I'll be too interested so anyway, that's what I said. I thought I thought Marvel. Now, uh, that actually did not end up happening because I thought Guilty Gear was going to happen before Marvel. I, I didn't know the schedule at the time. I thought it would be Mortal Kombat, Guilty Gear, Marvel, Melee, Street Fighter. I did not think it was going to be Marvel first, then Guilty Gear. So unfortunately, I, I didn't I didn't pass out during Marvel, and that's unfortunate because that would have been the tournament worth passing out during. God damn, it was boring. Holy shit. It was boring. I am, you know what? I'm not even going to discuss what happened. I am just going to say word for word. Ex I may explain a little bit just in case I, I don't think it's clear enough, but I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to read my notes. What the fuck? Did I just see someone in 2016 try to challenge Gamma Crush? I cannot remember specifically what happened. But I do very much remember that uh, Kane Blue River basically just did a random Gamma Crush out of fucking nowhere. And his opponent could have blocked it. But his opponent threw out a super of their own instead and just got fucking blown up by Gamma Crush. Like, you can't... You can't challenge that. That has never been a move you could ever challenge and fuck with. Hulk will body you. And in a 2016 Top 8, somebody tried to challenge it. How are we not past that stage at least? <laughs> like, what the hell, man? So anyway, discussing commentary. I feel like Yipes and Persia aren't even excited for this. The commentary is so unnaturally dull and quiet for the two of them. Really affects the overall mood of the tournament. Maybe it's just being uncomfortable with being heard throughout the arena. I feel like this negatively impacts a lot of people. They don't want to act naturally while the people playing can hear them. And so just to explain that a little bit, the microphones for the commentary for the games were hooked into the arena's PA system as well. So whatever they said, it went to the stream and it also went to the arena, which means obviously the players are in the arena. They can hear that. The entire audience can hear that. So they didn't act like they've ever acted before. It just it felt really toned down, really silent, really quiet. They weren't really getting hype over anything, and they were just kind of... It was almost like they were whispering into the mics, like they were afraid of being too loud. Which made it weird, and made it feel... Like I said, it made it feel unnatural. 
Oh, that's actually my next note. It's like they don't even want people to hear them. This will be the last time I mention it, but seriously, it's boring and awkward. And that, re- like I said, that really put a downer on a tournament that already was kind of just like by the books as expected. Here's Kane Blue River. Here's Chris G. Cool. Moving forward. That kind of thing, right? Uh... <laughs> What a terrible note. Oh my god, Rocket Raccoon Super giving me flashbacks of Bastion. I'm so triggered. <laughs> oh boy, I'm I'm stupid. It's been so long since I've watched Marvel, I forgot about TAC Infinites. Capcom, please, patch. Justin's dropped so many combos with Storm. I don't think Marvel had the longevity behind it to keep people enthralled with it all this time, and it's running on fumes because of it. Lack of player consistency shows. Am I declaring the death of Marvel? Yes. You know how I think that something basically has one foot in the grave and everybody that wants to protest knows that? That every single time something notable happens... They have to talk about how, see, it's not dead, look, 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 not dead. They always do it. Viscont looking at you. Every single time that motherfucker tweets, see, Marvel's not dead. Maybe the lady doth protest too much. We move forward. Oh my god, Team Hyper Combo with Hawkeye plus Dante and the Poison Arrow was fucking genius. That's the first thing I've actually gotten hype at. And that was like five matches in or some shit. Rest in peace, Apology Man. The Unblockables lost to the 50-50. Should have stuck with Blaze Blue, bitch. You're not good enough to hang with the big boys in Marvel. I said it. Hold that, bitch. Oh, shit. Eyes are starting to close by themselves during Losers Finals. It might happen during Marvel. This Grand Finals domination is so severe that Twitch keeps dying on me. That's right, Twitch died a couple times on me during Marvel Grand Finals. Yay, Chris G finally won EVO. Can Capcom make CVS3 or Capcom All-Star Fighting Jam or something to replace Marvel now that he finally got a title? Please. Capcom, please. Maybe you'll have learned your lesson from Street Fighter Cross Tekken and then Street Fighter V, and now you might actually know how to handle a goddamn fighting game, you dumbass business people. Holy fuck. We move forward. Laughing my ass off at this King of Fighters 14 trailer. It's so edgy. That's all I got. I can't even really remember it because it was it was a really bad trailer. <laughs> it was a really bad trailer. I am not trying to just needlessly hate on King of Fighters 14, I am carefully optimistic, I think would be, there is a, uh, there's a demo out for it, which honestly I probably should have gone and downloaded and tried out by now, but I have not because the only character that they have featured, they don't have the entire cast available in the demo, which makes sense, I don't think any fighting game has ever released a demo that features all of the available characters. Um, but I think there's like eight of them, and the only one of those eight that I'm actually interested in playing in the end is Yori. And so it's just kind of like, ah, eh, one character, I'm gonna end up, this is a fight, this is a fighting game, it's a decently high profile fighting game, of course I'm gonna play it regardless, so why bother? That's kind of my mentality for it so far, but like, so I'm just, I'm try, just trying to say, you know, I'm not trying to shit on King of Fighters needlessly, but that story trailer they released... They gotta find some writers. The fighting game community, the fighting game developers of the world need to find some real writers. Cause Cap Street Fighter V story mode, I haven't even played it myself. I have not touched Street Fighter V since like a week before Ibuki came out. I just like I mentioned before in a previous Nate Talks that I was just sick to death of Capcom's handling of that game, Capcom's disrespect toward its community for that game and it just it's kind of continued for I'm, I'm not going to get into it but suffice to say nothing has occurred to change my mind and so i have not touched that game but i did watch i want to say it was at e3 when mike ross and combo fiend sat down and played through the first chapter of the story mode and the entire time i'm just sitting there like this writing this storytelling is just bad it's not even like corny intentional like intentionally corny action flick kind of bad it's just bad bad and 
I thought kind of the same thing about Mortal Kombat story mode, and now seeing this trailer for King of Fighter 14 story mode, we all know Arc System Works story modes in general are fucked up beyond belief. So like, goddamn, what is wrong with you people? Find somebody who can actually tell a goddamn story, please, please. I'm so sick of it. All right. So anyway, after that, we move on to Guilty Gear Top Eight. <laughs> Damn it, I went to take a lunch I not take a lunch. I went to make lunch during the break between Mortal Kombat 10 and Mortal Kombat X closing up and Guilty Gear starting up and I come back five minutes later and Machabu has already won. <laughs> that lit like that's not even an exaggeration. That literally happened. I got back and they were getting up after the match had just finished and I'm just like, oh my god. Well, now we know who won EVO 2016. Of course he was going to win. Are you kidding me? What What was he? He had like a 97% win rate or whatever in Japan arcades. Who's going to beat that? Nobody. Nobody's beating that. That's too good. That is godly. Of course he's going to win. And so, of course, spoilers, he fucking won. Uh. Oh, here's my next note. Starting drama. Didn't everyone say Raven is terrible? No L. Felton top eight. Only one Johnny in losers. And here's a Raven player guaranteed top five. Because Kazunoko started out in winners. Which means he can't get out seventh because he has to get knocked down to losers first, then get knocked out, which means he's guaranteed top five. Welcome to how tournaments work, motherfucker. I know. Oh, I know. Showing my knowledge for the world. Oh my god. Rion? Ryan? I don't know how you actually pronounce that. Have mercy! He lost to an American in Street Fighter. He doesn't deserve this. So that must have been Ryan versus Kazunoko. He started off strong as fuck. Like, he blew Kazunoko out of the water. Made it look so, so, so free. For the, I think the entire first match, I think he just took two rounds in basically like five seconds total. And just destroyed him. And I'm just sitting there the entire time like, oh god, maybe Raven isn't good at all. But then Kazunoko brought it back. Kazunoko was sandbagging. What is happening? Yo, the Kai run back. Holy shit, what a match. That was an amazing match. If I remember it correctly, it basically ended with both players on just the tiniest shred of life left. And Ryan clutched it out. And he managed to win. But that... Honestly, just watch the Guilty Gear Top 8. If I'm being perfectly honest, if you did not get the opportunity to see it, I cannot possibly do the hype justice. That was the best Top 8 of the tournament for me personally. There's no question. And this is, again, coming from somebody who really has not gotten that much enjoyment out of Guilty Gear in its time being out. But that Top 8 was fucking brilliant the entire way through. So again, if you have not seen it, find it somewhere and please do yourself a favor and tune in and watch it and see how goddamn good that game is. Holy shit. That's all I can really say about that. So we move forward. Oh, that's right. They played some ads in the middle and it made me laugh because uh, as anybody who's paid attention to tournaments at all, basically since 2009 knows, if anybody advertised sticks during a major tournament, it was Mad Cats. Not anymore, boys. Not anymore. Combo moved in, and they had they had the uh, they had the ad at Evo. So that might be the final nail in the coffin. I mean, obviously everybody knows if you paid any attention to Mad Cats, they kind of just deleted half of their company. They removed a lot of employees, and I think I I would be surprised if they continue the fight stick business because. I'm not here to talk about that. Let's let's just not. Let's just not. Let's move forward. I should have ignored that. I kind of saw it and was like, should I ignore that? But I didn't. Oof. Frey. That's the only note I have for Ogawa versus Marlin Pie. <laughs> I love Ogawa's hype as fuck body language after win, despite his face remaining completely stoic. Like, I just remember, he did this big arm pump. He lifted his arm up into the air. But his face was just dead. There was no emotion on it whatsoever. That shit made me laugh at mad hard. Dear Mr. Wizard, please hire Bruce Buffer. Tasty Steve got no hype. 
That man needs to learn how to work an in-house microphone. Let me tell you. He was introducing people like, Arena, give it up for Marlon Pie. And like, that was it. Like, come on, no extension of syllables? No. Mandalay Bay Event Center. Give it up for your hometown hero, Marlon Pie. You know, like, there was none of it. None of You gotta be hype on an in-house microphone, man. You can't just be talking like you reading a book in front of your seventh grade teacher. Shit, man. Hypeness. You want to stream in front of 200,000 plus people, homie? Be excited. Shit. That made me so mad. So mad. So mad. Mr. Wizard, come talk to me. You come talk to me. I'll do it right. I'll do it right. If I can get a day off work. God damn it. Shit. Oh, it was Top Garen? Not Top Garan. It was Top Garen. Something. I don't know. Whatever. Damn it. I fell asleep. Eddie is ruining my life. Shit, I missed Ryan versus Machibu. That realization was the worst. That was when I fell asleep. I fell asleep during Guilty Gear Top 8 because it was Johnny against Zato, and I'm just not invested in those characters. And then I missed Kai versus Sin, or at least the first bit of it. But anyway, this commentator echo presentation, please. Just me being judgmental again. Millie is so ridiculous. Knock down into setup guessing game into knock down into super setup guessing game into death. Johnny, please. Don't you S tear away the run back of the match I already slept through once, you inconsiderate twat. That was when Omito was kind of blowing up uh, Ryan and... I gotta say, like, Omito, Omito was the standout of that tournament. Obviously, Machibu's domination cannot be understated. But Omito was kind of the moment of the tournament for me personally because he just kind of came out of nowhere and blew people up. At least for me. I don't know about you. I don't know if you knew about him beforehand, but I sure as hell didn't. So, what's my next? Jesus. Oh, this is what I remember. <laughs> um... I think I can't remember if he won the actual match off of it, but I just remember being like, "Hold!" Like Omito threw out a dust, just a raw dust. Which, if you don't know anything about Guilty Gear, that is an overhead. It hits high. You have to block it high. Everything that Johnny has available in his toolkit, all of the ridiculous tools at his disposal, and Omito used dust. I would have gotten hit too. There was no, there is no way I would have blocked a dust off, off of like just being curb stomped the entire time by this character who never used it before that, at least that I noticed. And then all of a sudden he just breaks out of dust. Like, holy shit, of course you're going to get hit by it. Omito, you son of a bitch. The internet will never shut up if Johnny wins Evo. <laughs> But then, like, oh yeah, here we go, here we go. I tweeted this, I tweeted this. So basically what was happening, Machibu looked dominating as usual. Omito started to run it back, and he started to win some shit. So I put down, I guess you could call this a machoke. <laughs> Alright, that was, that was definitely, nobody else came up with that at all. There's no, there's no way in hell anybody else thought of that. Along with me, because I'm I'm fucking I'm fucking clever. Fuck you. Don't you don't you be judging me. Don't you be I feel you. I feel you. Just don't you fucking judge me, you son of a bitch. I'm fucking. Nah. Never mind. The joke failed. Why is everyone at Evo so insensitive to my needs? I don't get the Kiske Grand Finals that I wanted. Johnny didn't take the underdog upset that I wanted to get the internet to blow the fuck up with rage about how overpowered Johnny is. They did blow up with rage over how overpowered Sin is. It's kind of funny, like, every, I just, I remember back when Sign first started. This character got no mix-up, he's not that good, he's just, you know, whatever, nobody's gonna use him. And he barely gets changed between Sign and Revelator, and all of a sudden, one good player picks him up and destroys the fucking world. Oh, this character's overpowered, and he needs nerfs. That is why I never, ever take random discussion regarding the quality of a character seriously unless I agree with it first unless I have my own first hand experience with that character I will never trust what anybody says because people people have different streaks and weaknesses to try and make this a little bit more PC and not completely just like 
tear into every dumbass that has ever made a snap judgment and been completely wrong and not given a flying fuck that they're made to look like a goddamn dumbass because they don't think they look like a goddamn dumbass even though you look like a fucking dumbass. Stop that. We move forward. But it's just, unless I have first-hand experience with it, I will never agree with anybody who discusses a character, whether or not they're overpowered or bad or anywhere in between, unless I have seen first-hand evidence and I have experienced it myself and I agree with the points. And anyway, we move forward. It's just, it's still, it's just, people are stupid. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Melee! Why doesn't Sonic Fox pick up this game? Every match has Fox in it. Holy shit, that hungry box bracket reset. You may notice from that that I didn't pay a terrible, terrible lot of attention to Melee Top 8. Sorry. Melee eclipses 200k viewers again, but I don't think it increased over last year. And then it gained 60,000 viewers from out of fucking nowhere. Did it? It did. It went up to like 260,000, right? If I'm remembering. No, it did not. It got up to 220,000 and Street Fighter was hanging around 160. That's where the 60 is coming from. Street Fighter was hanging around 160,000. So Melee got about 220,000 people at its peak. Which actually not that big of a growth over last year. But still, we move forward. I think this is the main problem with fighting games in general. A lot of the hype is lost if you don't understand the mechanics of the game. And so it makes it hard to draw in anybody that doesn't play. That is a discussion I want to have at another time. And that is something that I think Street Fighter V has done very well. It is not a complicated game. It has depth to it, but it is not complicated to understand. Whereas I don't have a... Like, I like to consider myself fairly decent at understanding what's going on in fighting games. I don't know what's happening in Melee ever. Ever, ever, ever. So, I do think that is, like, I'm, whenever I will talk about how I say I'm just personally not that invested in Smash, I don't really enjoy it that much myself, I am not saying any, by any means that Smash is not an interesting game, but it's that I don't understand what's going on, and so without that understanding, I don't have, there's no hype behind it, I can't be like, oh my god, that was amazing, what an amazing read, what an amazing execution, what an amazing thought process that led him to this point is just like oh cool that happened all right we move forward to the next thing that happened and now that happened and it's just moment to moment nothing draws me in because i don't really know what's happening and so i do think that's a problem but anyway just you know the last note hungry box yeah he's so happy that's really all you gotta say that was you could tell hungry box was mad excited over the entire thing and he's I got excited for him. Like, that that part was something I can understand. So, congratulations to that dude for winning EVO. I believe he won a huge prize pot as well. Congratulations go out to that guy. So, we finally end. Street Fighter V. Just before it all started, I really want MOV or Goichi to win just so people will shut up about Chun not being top tier because she hasn't won anything. That didn't happen. People got mika Other people got Nashed and Chun-Li didn't win. But I do think they showed how strong that character is, and I do think she is going to be one of the characters that is only going to get stronger as time moves forward because she does have a, a higher executional requirement than most of the rest of the cast. Certainly higher than Nash. Sorry, you Nash mains, if you feel superior about your execution. But we move forward. Fudo looked so dominating, but damn, you can never count on an old pro they do not crack. What a match to start on. It looked like a wash. Then MOV finally showed up. And then the run back for Mika to take it. Or no, I'm sorry. Then MOV's run back to take it to the final game. Final round. And then he got Mika again. God damn Fudo. Ruining my dreams. I'm just going to ignore that. Let's go Joe. That was the story, right? Like, that was, out of everything that happened, Joe was the story. He was the standout. And he, everybody counted him out. I don't think anybody counted him in to begin with. And there he is in top eight. And everybody counted him out immediately. And there he is with the win. And everybody counted him out again. And honestly, he could have won that match. He should have won that match, actually, if I remember it correctly. 
I can't remember specifically what happened, but I feel like there was a moment where if he had... No, there was! He got a jab! He got a jab, but didn't confirm it. Did I actually write that down? I feel like I wrote that down. Nope, I did not write that down. But I feel like I remember Joe getting a jab in the last round, and Ada was at a low enough health threshold that... Or, I'm sorry, not Ada. Um, shit, what was his name? Did I write it? Please tell me I wrote it down. I didn't write it down. God damn it. Oh, Yukadon. Yukadon. There we go. Uh, Yukadon was down to a health threshold where if Joe had confirmed that into Jab Jab Sonic Scythe Super, he would have won. But he didn't. He just hit the raw jab and then I think he dashed in for a grab or something. And if he had, lay, if he had hit confirmed that jab, Joe would have moved on and Yukadon would have been kicked out of the tournament. How crazy would it have been if he had confirmed that jab and moved forward? It's really unfortunate that he didn't. But like I said, man, that story right there, the entire arena chanting, we love you, Joe. His dad showing up, like, dude. <laughs> that is some, those are some emotional strings being pulled. And that was a beautiful story. That could not have been that could not have been scripted any better. And knowing, like I just mentioned before, with Capcom's storytelling techniques, they would not have scripted it that well. <laughs> that was an amazing story, and congratulations to that dude. Um, the one thing that, like, the only thing that I would change out of the entire top eight of Street Fighter V would make it so Fudo wins, because I feel like everybody and their mother just. We're like, ah, yeah, Infiltration's got it. Infiltration's unstoppable. He's too good. He won't lose. And then he didn't lose. And granted, that post-fight interview was amazing. And Fudo would not have had the personality to pull off the interview that Infiltration did. But I still feel... I, I wanted Fudo to win more. I just... I wanted... Well, namely, I wanted Fudo to win just because Miko winning Evo? Internet, please. They would riot. And it would be amazing. But unfortunately, Infiltration won. Everybody that bet on the safe bet made the right one. But anyway, we move forward. Let's see. Infiltration ruined the hype train. Ata vs. Joe and Fudo vs. MOV were amazing matches. Joe's excitement is so infectious. And then, what? Did, I don't even know what Infiltration did. I didn't write it down. Wow. <laughs> I just have a note here. This is Joe in all caps with like 70 E's. I cannot enunciate that. Man, what a run. It's a shame, but I feel like Infiltration would have stonewalled him regardless. Because, I mean, Infiltration blew up Yukadon in the Nashmir. Yukadon beat Joe in the Nashmir. Therefore, chances are pretty high that Infiltration would have blown up Joe in the Nashmir. That's kind of how it works. But then MOV had to play Goichi and the Chun Li team kill happened. Then Yukadon, which one even won? I don't even know which one won between MOV or Goichi. But then Yukadon took out Chun entirely. And then Losers Finals, Infiltration against... Uh, I'm not... Oh yeah, because Fudo won. So it was Infiltration against Yukadon. It was guaranteed. I was a little bit worried that Grand Finals was going to be another Nashmere after we suffered, what, three Nashmeres? No, there was three total. So there was one in Winners... Then you had Yukadon versus Joe, and then again you had Infiltration versus Yukadon at the end. But just so many Nash movies, and I feel like that was what really ruined my hype the most in terms of that tournament, in terms of that top eight, were the three Nash mirrors that happened. And I just I don't enjoy watching that character to begin with. So for there to be three mirror matches including that character, let alone the rest of the matches, that kind of ruined the top eight for me a fair amount. But anyway, where are we at? Oh, I'm just I'm just trolling. That's where I'm at. We're gonna end on the trolling. I'm just gonna. This has gone on long enough. This is probably my longest Nate talks that has ever occurred. So I'm just gonna end it on this note. Keck, Blaze Blue, Central Fiction, isn't one of the great upcoming fighters, according to James Chen. They mentioned at the end of the broadcast there are so many amazing fighting games coming out soon. Blaze Blue wasn't one of them. Hold that! <laughs>